music to stop. Before I preach this morning, uh, I'm going to recognize somebody. Tommy Smith, come up here, please, sir. Uh, Tommy was recognized in our community this week. If How many of y'all know who Tommy is? Uh, Tommy's one of those special people in our church. The local VFW recognized Tommy this week for uh, what he does in our community. And uh, in case you don't know, Tommy's one of our deacons. He also does this. He visits our widows, checks on them. He also, if you need a ride to the hospital, guess who you can call? He'll drive you to the hospital. So uh, they wanted to recognize for what he does in our community. So I told him, I said, let's do it in church this morning. So it just says this. Uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, United States, presented to Tommy Smith for mer meritorious and distinguished service in the furthering of the aims and ideals of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. Tommy, thank you. Thank you for being a Christian witness. Thank you. If you've not met him, you've missed a treat. Uh, I always like to start this time with a prayer. I got a selfish prayer this morning. Uh, my brother-in-law, Ronnie Wells, had a heart attack, and we're waiting to hear from the cardiologist now about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. So I told him, I said, we'll pray for you in church this morning. But I have another prayer. Pray for the workers who are working with the earthquake victims right now. Pray for those families who don't know, where's my child? Or where's my wife? Or where's my husband? You and I had a pretty easy week compared to what they had. So uh, can we pray for those folks this morning? Pray for the workers, and then pray for those families who are affected. And let me tell you something. Southern Baptists are on the field working right now. There's disaster relief people working over there now. So uh, join me in prayer. Father, I come to you, and I lift Ronnie to you today, Lord. I know he insists you're scared right now. Would you comfort them? And I thank you that they're at the hospital. There are doctors working with them, but I also thank you that you're there. You're doing what no doctor can do. So be with them. And Father, for those who are working around the clock, digging frantically, I thank you they're still retrieving people, but they're also uncovering heartache and loss. Be with those workers. Keep them safe. Give them renewed energy every day. Give them courage to maybe be in dangerous places sometimes. And I pray for those families who have lost loved ones. What a hurt. What a heartache. How little control they have right now. So would you show up? I thank you for Christians who are working right now, that they would be a light for your kingdom in the middle of all that. And I pray for those families who rejoice. My loved one's safe. I praise you for that today. So Lord, we just come to you as a body of Christ. We lift our lives to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And everyone said, amen. amen. It's Valentine's. It's love. And uh, love's one of those kind of funny things. Uh, you know, uh, how many remember in elementary school used to exchange Valentine's? And uh, one year I wrote, I, uh, I just put love Carl. And boy, some guys got, you don't put love Carl to a guy. Uh, you know, there, there's some funny things. And, and there's different ways that I see some things. And I, and I see things, how love is demonstrated. And how that we say there's some appropriate ways or some inappropriate ways. But as I watch and I, and I see, and, and love's been demonstrated towards me in a number of ways. But I see how it's misrepresented sometimes. And also see how magnificent it is sometimes. Uh... It's always interesting to me, and if you do this, I forgive you. You're one of those folks where people have said, if you love me or if you're my friend, you'll repost this. That's not love. Or someone says, if you really love me, you would climb in the back seat. Don't laugh. That's not love. What is love and how is it demonstrated? Real love comes with another word called commitment, that there's a commitment. I think probably the biggest challenge we have nowadays is, and I know you hear me see this because I, I see it, 
We're making poor choices in marriage about love. Love is not sex. Yes or no? Can you have sex without love? Yep. You know, love is, is not uh, guilt. You this because. It's, it's a commitment. And I see it show up, and I see it when a mom with a baby gets up when she's dead tired in the middle of the night. Can't think of she's taking another step. And she gets up and checks on that baby because she loves it. It's whenever that that loved one, a couple who's been married for years, and suddenly one becomes terminally ill, and that loved one stands by their bed because they love them. I watched probably one of the stories this week. How many of you saw the deal about the father who held his daughter's hand who was trapped, and he held it till she died? She was right there, but he couldn't reach her. He did that because he loved her. I want to be loved like that. And I want to love like that. And I want to demonstrate love like that. And, and I'm going to take you to, this is maybe one of my favorite chapters. We're going through the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. And on his title is God's Love Demonstrated. How did God demonstrate his love? Now, to Sandy and I, uh, this past year, Love was demonstrated when I had my wreck, and it was whenever that Earl Ferris would come sit with me for hours so Sandy could go home and get some rest. Uh, if you hadn't heard the story, I was not really cognizant of things, and this arm was really mutilated. And uh, I got frustrated in the middle of the night, and Earl tried to comfort me, and I hit him in the stomach, and it splattered blood all over him. Uh, he's never complained about it. I owe him a shirt. He did it because Steve Rayburn came and mowed my yard. He did that because he loved me. What's the last time you did, or what is the last thing you did for someone because you loved them? That they knew it, not just because of a word, not just because it's a post on Facebook, not just because it's a card, not just because it's a bundle of roses. That they showed your love. Uh, marriage, we're not taking those vows very serious anymore. You know, uh, commitment through thick and thin. Uh, matter of fact, kind of, what do those vows say? For better, for, for richer, for in sickness and in till death do us part. Commitment. Uh, marriage isn't always easy. Life's not always easy. And yet God says, I'm going to show you how much I love you. I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to do that. Now, my sister, every time I call her, the last words we say to each other are this. Love you. Does that sound familiar? And, and you know what? The older I get, the more those words mean to me. When I walk out of the house every time, Sandy says these words. I love you. In case I don't know, Sandy don't like me to drive by myself right now. And she'll go to where she don't want to go because she loves me. Uh, I'll just tell you this story real quick. We'll move on. Years ago, I loved the deer hunt, and Sandy said she would go with me one time. So we took an hour-long trip up the side of a mountain, and it's about 15 degrees. It's kind of sleeting, and it's just real nasty. And... Uh, Man, I'm having a blast. Sandy's standing beside me. Is she going to shoot a deer? No. She was okay till she went to wipe her nose and her glove froze to her face. <laughs> she stood up and she said these words, Take me home right now. <laughs> and I did because I, I was afraid of her. <laughs> Paul writes this. He says, let me tell you how much God loves you. You cannot understand how deep his love is until you go back to the first couple of chapters I told you about God's wrath. God said, here's what you deserve. Here's what you got coming to you. But this is how much I love you. And if you're feeling today like nobody in the world cares about me, nobody knows what's going on with me, he does. 
and he cares. He knows everything about you. You know, the Bible says we're going to stand before God and give an account of every word we speak. Do you know he knows the words we're going to speak before we ever say them? And he said, I love you. If you have your Bibles, turn to, to uh, Romans chapter 5. We're going to start in the first verse. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, last week we talked about we've been made right with him, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, if you write in your Bibles, I underline these next three verses. These are some of my favorite verses in the, in the book of Romans. It said this, at just the right time, a translation is perfect, perfect timing. When we were still powerless, when I could do nothing about my situation, when I couldn't change my past, when I couldn't change my actions, when I, as far as I was, I couldn't do anything about it. When we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Look at me. Take your finger and do this. I am the ungodly. Are you? Yes. I am the ungodly. I, I can't use one finger. I can use all mine. At just the right time, at the perfect time, when I needed it the most, Christ died. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But this is a verse most of you know. But God, what's the next word? Demonstrates. I'm going to show you. It's going to be revealed. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, what? Christ died for us. When I was at my worst, he died for me. When you're at your worst, God knew it. He sent Christ to die. He demonstrated his love. He just didn't say, I love you. He said, I knew how bad you were going to be. He knew how bad your life was going to stink. He knew how bad that mistake was going to be. He said, I know, but I'm going to show you. I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to demonstrate it. Since we have been justified by blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We're saved from what we deserve. The wages of sin is, that's what I deserve. It's not how many sins, it's one sin. It's any sin. But I'm saved by God's wrath. For if we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? And, and we use that word saved. And are you saved? Uh, and, and that's a rescue word. I've been rescued. Man, I was going under. And he rescued me. You know, I think about this week as those people were being uncovered and they saw that hand reach in there and they were saved. People around them were dying and dead. I'm saved. God said, I reached into your life. I grabbed you. At just that moment. Not only in this so, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we now have received reconciliation. He said, I've made everything right. It's okay. There's no past to deal with. There's no issues in your life anymore that you have to deal with. But, but I'm going to stop there, and we're going we're to pick this up, but I want to just kind of go back and pick up some things. How's God's love being demonstrated? What is, what is he talking about? What is he sharing here? And he, he says some specific things. He said the first thing is, you know, it's, he said, you have peace with God. Look back at the first verse. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you something. That peace does not mean absence of trouble. 
absence of issues. You're, as long as you're alive, you're going to have issues. Uh, and issues change. Uh, the issues at this stage of my life are very different. I have an issue getting out of a low chair. Does that, does that sound familiar to some of y'all? Uh, I've got other issues. That, that, but he says, you have peace with me. As far as relationship is there, it's okay. We're at peace. You don't have to feel guilt. You don't have to feel shame. You have peace with me. Now, a little further down, he's going to talk about sufferings and things like this. So we know it's not absence of turmoil. It means in that relationship with him, everything's okay. And I tell you what, uh, I hope your home is like this. That when you come home, your home is a place of security. I don't care how bad it's been out there. When I get home, it's okay. When I get home and I hear Sandy's voice, it's okay. He said, that's how it is with me. When you're in my presence. It's okay. That's one of the ways he demonstrates his love. Not what I deserve, but what he offers me. The second thing, in the second verse, he says, we've gained access to him. We can come into his presence. We can walk in. Now, I tell you what, all of us have those things in our life. We say, oh, I'm ashamed of this or whatever. But when it comes to him, he says, you got access. You know, the Bible says... I can ask in his name anything, and he'll grant it. I have access. I have access when I'm afraid and I need courage. He's there. I have access when I need healing. He's there. I, I can come before him, and, and he's there. And I think sometimes we miss that. When you come in here to worship, he's here. I hope this is the time whenever that you maybe put aside, and I know... There's some kind of football game tonight. That is irrelevant right now. If that's what you're focused on, you're going to miss the whole point of this sermon today. I have access to him, the one who loves me. I don't have to make excuses. I don't have to think of reasons why he should. He just says, I give you access. Come on in. Come before me. Stand before me. Now, to us, that doesn't mean a whole lot, but in these days, it was a Roman rule. You just didn't come into the emperor's presence. You had to have certain status or certain things. Or you just didn't come even for the king or anybody or, or, or one of the rulers of the, of the area you're in. You just don't walk in there. There's things, there's requirements have to be met. He said, God demonstrates his love toward us in this. Through Christ, I give you access. You can come into my presence when? When? In the middle of the night? Early in the morning? At dinner time? Not during the middle of the Super Bowl. We sometimes want to put conditions. Well, every time I say, no. We have access to him. And then a third thing is this. He said, we glory in his power and his presence. It says in, in the end of verse 2, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Glory is one of those hard words to describe. We all use it. We all say it. It just means we live in the magnificence of God, how big he is, how powerful he is. I mean, uh, we sing songs like glory to God in the highest, and, uh, you know, we, we throw words around, but, man, in his, in his love demonstrated, I, I stand in his, in his love, his power, and his presence. I have excess. How big he is. And, and, and a question I have for you, how big is your God? Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite praise songs is still, How Great Is Our God? Uh, you know, we, we sing it. Do we live like it? 
Paul is saying, man, he says, do you realize how much God loves you? He's showing you. He's not talking about it. You're living in it every day of your life. And, and then he said, here's, here's, what's, here's how it's going to show up. He said, in your life, you're going to have some suffering. That means things aren't going to go well. Any of y'all had a week like that this week? It didn't go well? Some of you say, I ain't raising my hand. Do you have a relationship that is not going well? Do you have a job where it's not going well? Do you have a health situation that's not going well? Suffering. A different kind of absence of peace. Hurt. He says, God is going to use those things. How great his love is, he's going to take that suffering and use it. We don't like suffering. We say, please don't pray for suffering. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful of praying. God, I want to show you. I want you to show me how big you are because he's liable to do it. And it may be he has to take you through something. How many of you can say there's been things in my life I had to look back to realize it was God at work? It was something he took me through. He brought me through this. He said, but that suffering's going to, it's going to, I put it in your notes, it's going to produce perseverance or patience. Hey, this isn't, this isn't all there is. This isn't as bad as it gets. This isn't as good as it gets. Uh, I got to realize he's at work. God is at work in my future. God is at work in your future. Hang on. He's still there. He's going to show up. Well, my loved one died. Place called heaven. We don't like to think about it sometimes, but boy, what a promise. Sometime I was suffering, God said, I'm, I'm going to teach you patience. Produces character. It means this, God's making you stronger. I'm going to prove how much, I'm going to make you stronger. Through things you go through, I'm going to make you stronger. Uh, since my accident, uh, I go to the gym and work out. And uh, boy, do I look magnificent in there. I see all these young guys in there, and they got their 100-pound dumbbells in there. I got my 10-pound ones. <laughs> Strengthening. Sometime God said, I'm going to take you through things. I'm going to show you how much I love you. I'm going to take you through things. I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to build your character. Because you've been awfully immature. Don't run away from it sometimes. And then he says, character produces hope. Hope is this. There's something ahead. There's something God's doing. Something, you know, a, a question I have to ask my, what, what does God have for me next? What's ne you ever ask yourself that question? What, what's God have for me next? Well, it may be the grave. Is there hope in the grave? The hope is the grave can't hold me. You know, I go to my mom and dad's grave. Praise God, they ain't there. That human shell is, they're gone. It's hope. He said, there's, some, there's something to look ahead to. And, and I just put it at the bottom of that deal. When you're going through those hard times, in God's glory, he's saying, I'm showing you how magnificent it is. Look for God's best when you're at your worst. When it's that terrible time, look, God, what are you doing? How are you showing up? What are you uncovering? What are you revealing? What are you doing some things? Now, and I'll tell you what, I'm always curious about these people. Uh, how many of y'all have friends that do this? that are real quick to tell you what's wrong. Uh, how many of you are that person? Let me tell you real quick what's wrong. God said, I'm not there to point out what's wrong. I'm here to tell you how to fix it. I'm going to love you. I'm always curious to people that, that, that come to church and they want to tell you, this is what's wrong at the church. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, what do y'all think people complain about the church the most about? You hit it. That music is too... Shame on you. What's good about it? What are you celebrating about it? 
You know, I, I'm, I'm always leery of these people. I, I don't ever, I don't ever mind constructive, you know, things that want to say, hey, let's look at this. But it's easy to point. God doesn't just say, let me point, 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 point. He said, let me fix it. Let me demonstrate my love to you. Look for God's best. Now, I want you to, we're going to finish this chapter, and you say, oh, my goodness, do you know what time it is? Yes, we'll be out of here by 1230. Pick up back down in verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man. Now, here's what I want you to do. In your Bibles, you under, every time you see in the next few verses, you see the word one man. I want you to underline it. One man. One person. Therefore, as the sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sin. Now, it goes from one to what that one person did affected us. Sin came to the world through him. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not changed or charged against anyone's account where there is no law. He said, where there are no rules. Now, if I were to get on a highway, I'm going to go to Houston, and there's no speed limit signs, what's the speed limit? There ain't one. He said, I came this way. The law, I saw it. But I'm taking care of the law. All those things, that we heard it, they're not there anymore. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did, not, who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern for the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if many died by trespass of, what's the word? How much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ. One man brought it in. One man took care of it. All sin for all time for all people. One man, Jesus Christ. God demonstrating his love to us. By the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflowed to the many. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in the life through one man, Jesus Christ? Sometimes Paul says these words, you go, what in the world is he talking about? I think some of these, you got to just kind of sit there and let it soak in. But he's just saying this. Christ's death was sufficient for you. The Bible said, my grace is sufficient for you. One man. How is that possible? Only by being a gift of God. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For as just as one through one, the disobedient of one man, the many were made sinners, so also through obedience of one man, the many were made righteous. The law was brought in so the trespass might increase. But where, grace, where sin increased, grace increased more. You see, whenever the sin looked like it was conquering, he said, Christ said, I am even more powerful than that. There's not a sin in your life that God can't deliver you from and can't forgive you from. Do you hear me? Don't say, I've been too bad. There's too much of my past. Uh, verse 21, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Fourth thing in your notes is this. How did God demonstrate his love? His encompassing love to all men. You know, we laugh and we kind of punch, you know, 
Uh, you hear me say, uh, God even loves cowboy fans. God even loves Democrats. God even loves Joe Biden. He loves, he loves you know, Donald Trump. We, we want to put, you know what? God loves you. God loves you where you are. He knows everything about you. He says, let me demonstrate it. Let me show you. You know what? Uh, this week, I'm probably going to buy Sandy some flowers. But that gift doesn't show near much my commitment and my love is how I live. Because she sees it. To those people in your life, there's people who need to see that commitment, need to see that love. And you may need to hear, God said, I'm committed to you. I'm committed to you. At your worst, I'm here. Let me demonstrate it. Let me show you. Let me pour it out. Look for God's best when you're at your worst. And today, this may be a dark time in your life, and you may need to hear, I need to hear God loves me today because I don't feel like anybody does. Uh, I don't like the way I was treated. I don't like the way somebody said something. I don't like the way that my job went. I don't like the way that this happened this week. Um, God's sitting there above all that saying, I love you. Do you know that? For a while we were still sinners. What happened? Christ died. Say this with me. Say it's, let's, let's take that word, we. For a while I was still sinning. Christ died for me. That's true today. Join me in prayer. Father, I, I thank you, Lord, that I understand how I don't understand how you could love somebody like me because, Lord, there have been times in my life when I was anything except what you wanted. But I'm thankful that you did. I'm thankful you just didn't tell me. You showed me. And you show me every day. And that love reigns and rules. And I pray for that person today, Lord, that just feels like nobody cares, that they realize how much you do and how important they are to you. I pray for that one who feels like my life's been so evil, how could you ever love me, that they understand these words. He knew. He knew when I was doing that thing, he was disgusted with it. I would do it, and yet he loved me. And through one man, Jesus Christ, he settled the account. God, you settled it. I'm amazed. I'm humbled. So Lord, would you move today? I pray for that one who's never accepted you, never received that love. They've never asked for that forgiveness. You want to demonstrate it today and show them. So, Father, I just praise you. Thank you for that amazing grace to save the wretch like me. So, Father, I ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I want you to stand. The invitation's open. And... Uh, you know, a while ago, I, I said, I'm going to demonstrate my love a little bit. I went up and kissed my wife. Maybe today you need to demonstrate your love. Maybe you need to come to the altar and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Or maybe you just need to say, Lord, I'm tired of running. I need that peace. I want the access that you're offering me. I want to live in your glory. You can do that today. Looking for a church home, we'd welcome you. Let's do what God says. If you need to receive him, we'll share with you how to accept him to your heart today, how to receive that gift he gives you. So as Paul leads us, you come.